Hi students, now we've seen the basic multiplexers, the 2 to 1, the 4 to 1, and the 8 to 1 multiplexer. So let me show you how we use multiplexers to implement another function. So let's do an example problem. For example, suppose we have the function um, with three inputs, x, y, z, and in midterm form is the sum of midterms 1, 2, 6, and 7. So first things first, let's write out the truth table for this function so we can figure out how to um, map the inputs to the output for the multiplexer. So if we have inputs x, y, z, I'll put the min terms here and the output f, then um, the first case 0, 0, 0, this is min term 0. It's not in our list of min terms, so um, f will be 0 there. At 0, 0, 1, this is min term 1. Min term 1 is in our list of min terms, so that's where we have the 1. 0, 1, 0 is min term 2. Min term 2 is also in our list, so we have a 1 there. 0, 1, 1, min term 3 is not in our list, so that means we have a 0 there. 1, 0, 0 is min term 4, also not in the list, so it gets a 0. 1, 0, 1 is min term 5, also not in the list, so it gets a 0. But 1, 1, 0 is min term 6, that's in our list, so we have a 1. And 1, 1, 1 is min term 7, and we have a 1 there, because that's also in our list. Okay, great. So, let's think about this truth table for a second. We have 8 different states of f. And what determines if f is a 0 or 1? Well, what's coming in on the input? So if we have an input of 1, 1, 0, we know we want our output to be 1. If we have an input of 0, 1, 0, we want our output to be also a 1. So um, we can use these inputs here as our selectors for either a 0 or 1, and then pipe that to the output. Okay, so there's actually two ways to do this. We can do this with an 8 to 1 multiplexer because we have 8 states of our output here. We can also do it another way, a little more clever way, and that is we can use a 4 to 1 multiplexer, which is better because it's smaller, faster, less complicated, less costly. Okay, great. So let me show you the first way. This is pretty straightforward. So first, we can use an 8 to 1 multiplexer, and here's the idea we are just going to kind of hard code these um, output states of f as inputs to our multiplexer. It's an 8 to 1, we have 8, we have 8 here, so this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We're going to put in 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. So we copy this from the truth table, goes as inputs to our multiplexer. These are our data line inputs. Now, what goes on our select lines? If I label this select 0, select 1, select 2. So these are uh, three bits of select lines for our 8 to 1 multiplexer that we talked about in the last video. So to pick this first input, we want x, y, z to be 0, 0, 0. To pick the second, we want x, y, z to be 0, 0, 1. So we can actually pipe these inputs directly to our select lines. So this is kind of a change in thinking. These are our inputs to our function to give us this, um, but we're going to use these inputs here as our select line inputs. And the data inputs, we're just going to hard code the zeros and ones that we know are in the correct order according to the truth table. So here is our output f implemented with an 8 to 1 multiplexer. All right, so let me show you how we do the same thing with a 4 to 1 multiplexer. Um, the way you do this is the first step is, again, we want to make this truth table. Now, the second step is we are going to split this truth table into groups of two. So we have two bits here. So every two rows, I'm just going to split this up. Okay, so now what we do is we have this is a case, this is a case, this is a case, and this is a case. So how did I know to do that? Um, and the answer is that we, if we want to use a 4 to 1 multiplexer, instead of having 8 different cases, we, ha we just want to have 4 um, cases to be piped to inputs of our multiplexer. So um, we need to be clever and think of how we are going to um, 
what are we going to put on our data inputs and our select lines in order to have the correct output on F from our multiplexer. Okay, so let's, let's look at what's happening here. Um, in this case, between these two rows, what do we have? We have X is equal to 0 in both of these rows. We have Y is equal to 0 in both of these rows. And then look at Z. Z is 0, 1. And what else is 0, 1? F is also 0, 1. Well, that means that here in this group, F is actually equal to Z. Okay, great, so let's do it here. Now, in this case, with these two rows that we grouped together, we have X is also equal to zero, Y is equal to one, and what's on F? Well, F is now one, zero. In the previous case, what was on Z was the same thing that was on F, but now Z is zero, one, and F is one, zero. So how can we represent that based on our inputs, well, we can say this is a z naught. Because if this is a zero, complement it, it becomes a one. If this is a one, complement it, it becomes a, a zero. Great. So this next case here, here x is equal to one between these two rows, y is equal to zero, and z is one, zero, but f is actually just zero in both of these cases. So you know what we get to do? We just get to say, f is equal to zero. And then same thing down here, x and y are both equal to one, and f is just equal to one. So see what we did is, um, we went from having eight different output cases to just four. Now we can put this into our four to one multiplexer. One, two, three, four data inputs. On here we're gonna put z, z naught, zero, and one. And then how about the select lines? What are we gonna put on our select lines? Well, remember for the four to one, we only have two. We don't have all three like we did in the eight to one. So this was easy, we just put all three inputs from our truth table down here. But now we just have S0 and S1 as our two select lines. So what do we put here? Well, um, what changed basically for this case here? This was the case zero, zero. This was the case zero one, this was one zero, and this was one one. So actually, um, we used z to determine um, our output, but x and y we used to change the states between the different groups. So that means we can actually put x and y here, and as these scroll through all of our binary states, these are going to select the inputs here. So this will get piped to F. So the four to one multiplexer, first thing, you make your truth table, you split it into groups of two rows, and then figure out um, how to make this from one of the inputs, or with a zero or a one. So let me know if you have questions about this, um, and I'll give you a practice problem so you can try.